Thank you, Ravi. This was absolutely stunning. I, I think this really opens up our mind to think very differently. It actually uh, shatters a lot of assumptions that we actually end up making uh, when Ravi was speaking. So I, I think it propels us to do something and really act in many different ways. So we'll very uh, quickly, I think, questions and answers with Ravi as you, he's there with us through the day. So please ask him uh, when you want to and talk to him and I, I think he'll have some unique things here. We have to really uh, move on to the next thing. So we have uh, a very interesting panel coming up. Uh, we have a panel on innovation wherein we are talking about state-based things and how competitive advantage of firms can actually get created, how innovation drives it, and so on and so forth. So uh, may we have uh, Amy Alloy. Uh, Amy has traveled all the way from US, an expert on innovation, IP, and things. So thanks a lot for joining us today. Uh, Himanshu Jain, uh, he is uh, from Sealed Air. Uh, in fact, one of uh, very interesting enterprises which actually talks about cleaning and things. Uh, and of course, is able to sell air as well. Uh, Sanjeev uh, Navangul, uh, Sanjeev is, is from Johnson & Johnson. Amitabh Thakur from uh, Gamcha. Uh, Amitabh is a very interesting person, lives in Germany but runs an enterprise out of Bhagalpur uh, in uh, Bihar. Uh, and makes some, one of the finest scarves in the world. It's a medium, small and medium enterprise, but does something very interesting. We have Amit Kharbanda from MyBox, uh, Ashim Roy from Uber Diagnostics. And uh, we have a very special moderator here today. Uh, his name is uh, Anul Padmanabhan. Uh, so Anul, that's, that's for you. <laughs> so Anul is from uh, Mint, so, but thanks a lot. Over to you and you have exactly yeah, this is working. Thanks. I, uh, the format, uh, I thought we'd just differ from the previous one. Um, uh, that I'll uh, explain that before proceeding into the conversation. Is that we'll, uh, each of us will go about two, I mean, excluding me, <coughs> about two to three minutes setting out the context. And uh, I thought that's probably fair that each one gets a little bit of equitable talk time before we open up to the audience because I, I seen a lot of uh, curious questions coming in the previous sessions. But uh, before that, uh, <coughs> thank you Ravi because uh, coming after Ravi, it's a great thing because he set the context so well and uh, it fits in right into this topic that we are discussing. So with no, with no further ado, I'll uh, come back later with my questions. If I can begin from my extreme left, which is my normal ideological weakness. So <laughs> if you can go first. I thought you were going to speak first, uh, but nevertheless, my name is Ashim Roy. I'm from Uber Diagnostics. Uh, we are in the field of chronic disease diagnosis and intervention. So we design products which, uh, which go into the primary care health, primary health care centers uh, to help the doctors diagnose. And then we are, of course, health, uh, connected network of solutions. So as a result of that, we are able to take that information, send it across to hospitals, doctors, specialists, etc to provide, complete the intervention process. Uh, in terms of innovation and in terms of competitiveness, uh, one of the challenges that we face as a company in India, start, particularly a startup company in India doing hardware manufacturing, uh, we have a huge amount of uh, competitive challenge compared to com you know, organizations from China and similar countries where manufacturing is very large. And there's a huge amount of government support that those uh, those companies receive. Uh, I see a lack of that in India. Uh, what is going to be our future is, is to be seen, but uh, I'll leave that for a question later on. <coughs> Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Amit uh, Kharbanda. I come from a company called MyBox Technologies. Uh, we started in 2008. Uh, we are a setup box ODM uh, brand in India. Um, we started in eight as a startup and last year we've joined uh, Hero Electronics, a new vertical of Hero Group, uh, the Hero Motocrop, and um, I run the organization. Um, we've been a startup who started on the whole hardware software, uh, taking on the might of all the international brands. Uh, it's not that we've been very successful, but we've made a mark in the media entertainment industry, uh, which is predominantly completely imported. Um, Coming to innovation, I think the whole concept of just putting the name of my box was innovative. Uh, life is about change and life is about innovation. Uh, we've been cons constantly doing it 
uh, as he just said, there are lots of lots of pressures with the government environment and we understand coming from hardware as well. But that's a part of what we are all doing. We are all uh, working towards a better uh, future for uh, because what we one thing we all believe is that uh, whatever little bit we can, we will and we are innovating in my box to reach um, a company which makes India proud across the world. And that's what we've been working with. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Amitabh Thakur. Uh, I have founded a company called Gamcha. Uh, we are still not making the world's best scars, as Amit said. We are trying to do that. We are, we, we are trying to do that. Uh, uh, <clears throat> in terms of innovation, I, frankly, I don't know whether I was called here for my, for the reason that I am from Bihar, because, <laughs> uh, or for my own firm, but. Uh, in terms of innovation, uh, this, this yarn, 90% of the yarn comes from India, uh, which means that 90% of this yarn worldwide is grown in India. It's called Aries Silk. Uh, there is a lot of innovation that has gone into before this scarf could be made because the, 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 the count of the thread, as they say, you know, uh, to get to a count of 210 by 2 in Aries Silk, a lot of processes had to be improved and lots of innovation had to happen before it could. Because airy, airy silk is like cotton and has wool-like property and it can't be cinched. So which means to make it very fine you have to, and frankly I'm not an expert, so I, I have seen and I have uh, uh, you know, learned a few things. But plenty of innovation has gone into it. For example, the dyes are from, uh, this dye that we, uh, you see here is from lac black insects. And uh, it's done in Moradabad. Um, you know, the previous speaker was talking about, about science, you know, uh, affecting and, uh, you know, how science is impacting the innovation and all that. Frankly, science can, be, can remain in be, can at the you know, back end of the, of the things. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm a bit speechless is because I'm not an expert on this. And I, my, my, my experience is a bit, uh, a bit disjointed. And it's, it's, been, it's been two, three years where I found the supplier, I found the, you know, uh, in a state of Bihar um, and probably as, as we go along I'll talk about you know the challenges I faced and the, you know what kind of uh, lack of support or, or support is existing there in that state. Thank you. No it's not Bhagalpur silk it's uh, it's it's area which comes from Assam and Meghalaya. My name is Sanjeev Navangul I belong to Johnson & Johnson um, everybody knows about our uh, image as a baby products company, but I think we have a bigger side of the company which let me explain in simple terms is that no surgeon can cut open anyone or seal anyone without using a Johnson & Johnson suture or a knife, you know. So that's the contribution and of course we are, the, we are the currently the fastest growing pharmaceutical company in the world. So there is a lot more to Johnson & Johnson than what people think of. But I, I, I wanted to raise a different point uh, Anil was on. Everybody talked about innovation. I wanted to raise something about competitiveness. And I want to raise some numbers here. You know, every three minutes, two people die of tuberculosis in India. Every hour, eight women die of cervical cancer in India. Uh, Six billion dollars is the total cost of diabetes and cardiovascular diseases per year for India. And we talk of competitiveness. I think India's competitiveness is solely dependent on creating a healthy India. And if we are not a healthy India, there is no competitive India. I'll tell you the cost of or the impact of GDP of cardiovascular and diabetes diseases is bigger than the drag poverty has on India right now. It's far bigger. So forget, you know, some other issues that we keep talking about in newspapers and in uh, television or anywhere in policy making. We are forgetting that India's competitiveness is being hurt basically because of improper healthcare innovation or healthcare infrastructure or policy that we have. And I, I would rather raise that point than the innovation part because we are far away from healthcare innovation in India anyway. Thanks, Sanjeev. Thanks, Anil. Um, I work for a company called Sealed Air. Um, let me say it's not an airline. Sealed <laughs> uh, Air uh, claim to fame is. Uh, a very well-known iconic product called bubble wrap 
and the company started in 60s with the invention of bubble wrap the whole dna of the company is about innovating simple vision is to create a better way for life and a mission is to reimagine the industries we serve the key word is reimagine so that the world works stays feels better the idea being that whatever processes you observe the whole innovation starts by observing what is being done and how can it be done better and then you use technology work back and change let me give some examples you take 3 hours to clean a milk evaporator in a dairy and maybe you know um, one ton of coal equivalent of heat energy to clean the evaporator and suppose i reduce it to 200 200 kilos from one ton and i reduce the time from 3 hours to 1 hour is it a better way is it innovation does it improve the capital productivity we work on problems like that so we work in three spaces damage reduction and um, productivity improvement from product packaging food shelf life extension and food waste reduction in the food space and the public spaces hygiene the whole all the three businesses are you know kind of the everything we sell is innovative in a way if not individually but collectively like they form a part of the package and the way i see the indian state on innovation and the uh, need for competitiveness we feel that without innovation one cannot be competitive because then it becomes a cost game and a cost game is a definite lose lose game i don't know many companies who came out with a co lowest cost model have survived long enough most of the companies at some point in time tend to kind of fall by the wayside and i won't take names or examples but if you look around you you will find very few companies would have done a good job playing on the cost what and the the, the you know a great example is nano it was the cheapest car never sold because people look for value they don't look for the lowest cost what they look for is is it worth what am i going to get you know the value out of the product what we lack in india is very clearly a science based innovation which ravi um, talked a lot about and i i kind of feel he was speaking my mind in a way but on the other side we have a tremendous resistance to any kind of change uh in the corporate setups i am not talking of the consumer consumer picks up so a lot of resistance to innovation comes from within than from outside because once the product goes out there are failures there are successes uh, but uh, we resist changing what is running well and i think the key to innovation is to cull to kill what is running well and replace with something better Thank you. Uh, my name is Amy Alloy. I work for an organization called Pharma, which is an industry body uh, based in Washington, D.C., and we represent uh, global pharmaceutical companies and, and biotechnology companies. Um, you've likely noticed that over the last several years, the Indian government has prioritized the life sciences sector in many of the initiatives that Prime Minister Modi is championing. Start up India. make in india innovative india and rightfully so because the biopharmaceutical industry brings tremendous values to economies across the globe generates high value jobs advanced manufacturing jobs transfer of medical knowledge through clinical trials and uh, the research process and most importantly new medicines uh, bring better quality of life to patients in india and across the world So what does this mean for Indian states we're talking about states and competitiveness I think you know when you look at the sector globally it invests about 170 billion dollars in R&D of which India's share is actually quite small at this point and it shouldn't be that way because India already has many of the components of a strong 
uh, innovative ecosystem that should stimulate clinical research and, and further drug development. But I guess to borrow from Ravi's comments, you know, it's the system. And we've seen recent results from a research study that surveyed business leaders in countries who are leading the businesses as part of a, a global multinational company. And these leaders are oftentimes the champions within their businesses for investment from the global headquarters. And what we learned from these business leaders is that policies matter and that the policy environment for these investments oftentimes is driving the decisions for where the global drug development dollars will go. So the challenge I think for states who are looking to be more competitive in this sector is to build the tidal wave, if I can again borrow from Ravi, and look at what policies are necessary to drive the investment. In the biotechnology and pharmaceutical sector, we know that this is a, a strong regulatory environment, a public and private research community, a healthcare system that rewards innovation, and a business environment that both uh, rewards and protects innovation. And so I think states need to take a closer look at what they can be doing at the state level to promote this type of environment. And we know too that states don't always have control over all the policies that impact their businesses. So I think they can also be stronger advocates with the central government for policies that they also need and for all of India to be more competitive in the sector. Thank you, uh, thank you all. Um, I think uh, <coughs> we got we're doing perfect time. We've got about 20 minutes for uh, questions. Uh, being the chair, I think I'll take the first two questions. And uh, if I can just pull everything together, uh, all that all of you have said is basically talking of the ecosystem taking off again from what Ravi was dwelling on in detail. And, uh, you know, I'm curious to know, uh, I mean, uh, it's been... There's a new regime in power. I mean, I don't mean to make this a political discourse, but uh, I think they have been trying a lot of new things. Uh, you mentioned some. Uh, in fact, you're technically part of the Swachh Bharat campaign, you know, so in many ways, in the kind of work you do. Uh, and uh, Amy mentioned about this Make in India, etc. So, and now we've seen these new numbers, which Ravi alluded to, you know, how India has bumped up some 16 points on the competitive rankings. So, uh, to I mean to someone like Amy looking at from outside in and uh, like Amitabh I just I'll come to you because it's very curious that you set it up in Bihar you know and uh, I mean no offense but I'm just saying that's a very tough call yeah no uh, regardless but your tough call to set up a firm in Bihar and in Bhagalpur I think a lot of us with a little bit of history know the history of Bhagalpur you know so it's a very tough place to be in and uh, to conduct business out there and uh, to, to a grassroots level project like the one you're doing. So I'm curious to know from your own experiences, uh, we, I'll begin with you because the easiest that you can give us a macro view. And do you see a kind of change in mindset, uh, you know, like a mindset reset is the first step towards proceeding to innovation. So I am putting the hypothesis that that is actually begun happening. So am I right or am I wrong? I would agree with that. I think that there has been a mindset reset and I think that Prime Minister Modi has done a great job of championing a stronger business environment and uh, championing the types of reforms that need to be in place for businesses to come to India and to invest across sectors. I think that you know, he had a strong platform coming in a few years ago and has really worked to push forward those reforms. I think especially from Washington talking to the business community and talking to global companies, I think there's a strong recognition that this is not an easy task. It does not happen overnight and that it does take some time, especially in a challenging democracy, which we can appreciate in Washington as well. Um, I think the, the challenge is going forward is that signs and signals and promises and platforms are important, but what really matters again is consistent and predictable and reliable policies that businesses need to look at and see that they're in place, that they can plan for and that they can bring investments to India and know that the environment uh, will be consistent and that their investments will be protected. And I think that that will be a challenge ahead to create that environment and for that perception to be well received across the globe. Now I clearly see changes taking place in the corporates. 
the innovation is much more accepted word and sometimes I tend to think whether it's a genuine belief in innovation or is it a fad because we all go through a herd mentality or, um, you know whether it's a startup or a dot com and we go through that process but uh, the, the, the talk around innovating and making it different is very, 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 very much happening all over. The only challenge is that many times you have the same genie in a new bottle and we call it an innovation. So I think that's the risk with the overuse of the word innovation. So I think uh, in when Make in India was announced, we were amongst the early ones to get involved. We put a fairly large factory in near Hyderabad. Telangana government went all the way like a red carpet and it has gone off very well. So we, we see impact of the policy change and in reality because we've been experiencing it. On the other hand also there are some, you know, it's, it's a mixed bag because there are some issues that are not getting resolved. For example, in healthcare, probably the biggest, one of the, one of the good cornerstones of having healthcare innovation is clinical trials. And with courts getting involved, with media getting involved, with parliament getting involved, it became a pendulum from India being really a very, very good center for clinical trials. It has become a place. Okay, I think um, we are one of the example that can answer this question because we started this company in 2008 and 2008 doing an R&D, fighting all the international brands. There was no Indian company at that moment. And at that time also we had all these issues coming up. But I always say that when you are saying uh, the PM is working hard, he's talking of make in India, it's all very nice because his environment that he's got ecosystem and he's come to power has changed from 2008. Um, I, I, uh, friends who know me, we, I always say my box is a very destiny child because I started my firm in June 2008. If it was October, I wouldn't have got the funds to start. Now I could have come back and said, you know, I didn't start a company, it was a good idea, but I started it in June. Because the ecosystem then changed for two years because the economic crisis happened. So at that time I used to go to a lot of government and telling them that, you know, we're making this set-top box. So people would say, why do you want to do it? It comes imported. And I started with R&D. For, for two years I didn't go commercial. And a team of 20 people funding through my pocket, all that went on. But we believe that we will be able to fight because we are fighting and we know India boxes will sell. That time everybody in the government was supporting us, but they couldn't go ahead because then they would say, we used to have issues of state taxes. So they would say, we cannot handle this issue because GST is about to come in 2008. And we all know GST has been talked for the last 10 years. So number of time my file would be stopped, GST is about to come, next year it will get solved. Now it's just that the ecosystem has changed. He's got a position where everything is better, inflation is better, uh, fuel is down, make in India is the news that world is talking. In last two years, I'm getting more awards because suddenly people are coming and saying, oh, you are make in India. I've been doing that for 2008. I've been doing it for six years. Suddenly, I have secretaries I'm meeting very easily, the guys who I used to wait for. Because suddenly, because the PM says make in India and they found out in set box, the only company available was my, my box. So I took an advantage of the fact that we, we were there and we survived that, so we are now making it. So it's not about whether it's changing. It's been constantly changing because it's inevitable. India has been growing. India is growing. It's inevitable because the world ecosystem is changing. I think what has changed is not so much as make in India, but what has changed is this whole internet, which has brought the world together. The information is flowing, the industries is flowing, the, the technology is flowing, we are all having access to technology and then we have suddenly have this thing called self-belief. What I like about our country going forward is suddenly I, I see a lot of youngsters coming out of college, they don't care a shit about whether they are from Maharashtra, Bombay, Pune, Hindu, Muslim, they talk about entrepreneurship, they talk about business, they talk about what is the best way to make business, make funds. And that, if it's happening under this regime, brilliant. I only hope they carry on because what we need is we don't need a government, we just need a government who carries on, does the things, comes out and says, okay, what do you want? We have lots of issue right now because in 2001, government went and signed some free trade agreements. Today they are screwing us big time because nobody thought in 2001 all this manufacturing will ever happen in India. And suddenly they have, when I went la last year, so they said, oh, we didn't realize in 2001, now we are a part of FTA, we cannot take this back. So suddenly nobody can support us and 
items where we were being protected because if there was a disability, they've gone. So now we are fighting with ASEAN. So in fact, some of them even tell us that, see, if you can manufacture there for time being while we work out something. We are saying we'll still fight. But important is a government which can just carry on the positiveness and it. The rest of it, I think the Indians are very, very capable to go ahead and do it. Okay, so this is an interesting uh, kind of a topic that you, or question that you asked. I agree with you can entirely that when you're in water, you don't think that you're getting wet. And we are exactly in that situation. As a startup company, which is three years old, we have filed for three, uh, four patents so far. Why? One is because uh, every time I go and meet with the investors, they ask me how many patents I have. Uh, when I go and talk to my customers, they say, do you have any patents? How are you going to defend yourself against GE? Uh, so protection is a key issue. And how do I protect my ideas? has to be through some mechanism and patent seems to be a good way of protecting ourselves against the, uh, against the large companies as well as to establish the fact that we are innovating. We are actually promoting new ideas within the company. Uh, where I have an issue and picking on his challenge of uh, he will continue to manufacture in India, I think he is large enough to do that. Can I do that? I don't think so. Next month we are actually heading to Malaysia we're going to st stop manufacturing in India. And that's the situation, because we are not getting any support from anywhere. And I'm sorry to say this, uh, we started with the idea of do it in India, build it in India, manufacture in India, innovate in India, uh, file IP in India, but yet uh, we don't get any support from anywhere. So we have to compete in the global market. 30% of our sales are in India, 70% globally. How do I compete against the Chinese uh, who are producing their products at much lower cost basis. And they're getting, on top of that, they get a lot of support from the government to promote their product internationally. We don't get any, any of that. So we have to survive. I have never ever heard so far in this whole uh, discussion about make in India, whoever said that buy in India, I'll come and buy in India. No one said that so far. And we have to continuously struggle with that issue of sourcing material, selling in India, Yes, we will continue to sell in India. We are not walking away from India. We are Indians. We'll stay here and we'll continue to create jobs. But manufacturing, more than likely, we will move out of here. Okay, thank you all. Um, I think um, the key thing is legacy issues, which uh, I think uh, very passionately he argued. Uh, so I, at this stage, um, I'll just uh, make an observation that um, um, while we talk of Make in India, we forget the finest Make in India example is uh, uh, very counterintuitively in the public sector, which is ISRO. You know? So it's an island of excellence and uh, I think it's a book is waiting to be written about how it has managed to do what it does and continues to do what it does. Anyway, that's just an observation. We'll open up for questions and uh, we have about... Uh, 10 minutes and uh, just brief questions and uh, introduce yourself and if it is specifically directed at anyone. No. The gentleman at the back. Thank you, sorry. Asking the question again. Uh, quick question for Amitabh and Amit, please. Uh, besides financing and the legacy issue that we just talked about, what are the two biggest challenges uh, personally for you each that you faced and how have you solved them or how should we solve them? So it will be much helpful you know, for budding entrepreneurs like us. Um, first of all, I think when you are starting a startup, just don't start a startup because you know, that's the trending thing in town. You've got to understand what it is. I was in this set-top box field representing some companies, realized that there is a need gap here and there was no Indian company, got into it. Once you get into it, you do a little bit of homework before, but a lot of things unfold when you actually get into it. Um, two, three areas where I think personally we, we worked very well within our organization was um, we stayed focused and passionate without just going overhead even when the success happened. Because a lot of initial times will come and you'll have a success which takes you log-headed. Um, in the first two years, we, were, we knew we were going to be R&D, so we got our budgets. The f immediately when we started selling, we were so big that we had a big order in the next six months. 
and at that time i always and i now recollect if i had gone ahead and said that you know now we are done and we've reached there um it wouldn't have we actually used that fund and we started doing further r&d because we didn't forget that what we were here was the r&d the fact that we have to create ips and what is the story that we are looking at and that helped us later because suddenly a trend came and the market collapsed and it moved to a high definition market and we had used our resources then to go into high def instead of you know a new startup suddenly having 3 40 crores 50 crores in uh, business so i think for me that worked and second most important thing has been that irrespective whatever happens and that comes from a guy who's run a startup that that in your room you can crib about it but once you are step out with your team it's always hunky dory this gentleman on the mic two for uh, two uh, issues for uh, amitabh also please two problems so Sorry? the question was answered to both of you okay. two to him and two for you two 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 issues that i faced well i i i need to get to bhagalpur very quickly <laughs> and, and and i can't get there and it takes at least 24 hours if i don't want to spend 50000 rupees arranging a car and then going there you know from bagdogra so getting there is the biggest challenge i face getting there is the biggest challenge i face amit has traveled with me and he doesn't want to go next time <laughs> good evening so my questions around ip protection and incremental innovations uh considering i have two people from pharma out there might be a good question a uh, question really is should uh, inno incremental innovation be protected and uh, what would be the right mechanism for it contrasting the situation of the epi pen and the insulin issue that we have today in the us versus india where it cost maybe 18 dollars for an entire month of insulin versus over a thousand dollars in the us how does how do you deal with that sure uh so i think An important point here to keep in mind is about the science of drug development, right? And the way that we learn from the scientific process is incrementally. Oftentimes you take a first step, we learn about a specific molecule, you you know, do some more research, you learn incrementally step by step about the scientific process and um whether or not a molecule or a specific process that you're working on has any value. And so I think that when we talk about drug development and incremental innovation, um we oftentimes have to separate certain concepts and I think we shouldn't suddenly throw out the idea of incremental innovation um just because sometimes it has a a negative connotation that I think sometimes gets picked up in the discussion but really do remember that the scientific process we learn um in increments now i think the epipen discussion in the us is certainly a huge challenge and it's received a lot of attention in the press there are a number of different uh, policy issues that are wrapped up in the epipen discussion um one of which is a regulatory issue a challenge with fda and some products that have come off the market thus leaving mylan with the only product on the market right now obviously causing challenges and uh, the us congress has um brought the Milan CEO to testify before Congress and ask several questions about the challenges they are trying to get to the bottom of what can we do in the US to create a system um where these types of challenges don't happen in the future and that there is greater competition in the marketplace which we believe helps to drive down prices when there are mo multiple products on the market. So it's an interesting case study I think to look at in terms of you know what can we do through the regulatory system to promote um high quality products and greater competition um and I think the other important component of that that Sanjeev has touched upon is the healthcare system and what portion of spending our patients paying out of pocket to receive their medicines and in certain cases when it is a high uh percentage that patients have to pay out of pocket that of course has financial um implications and is a financial burden for families and their bottom line and we have to think about how we can address that problem through um various healthcare financing mechanisms insurance reforms and um other types of programs where we can ensure that fi families are not um financially burdened as they try and access medicines that they need I just want to pick up a point from Amy before I give you two examples of what you said is that we are probably one of the rare countries in the world where social burden of health is not picked up by the government but has to be picked up by the industry 
and we therefore keep on debating price, IP discussions and all, which is all probably irrelevant discussion and not so important discussion as much as why can't government pay for citizens' health. is probably the biggest discussion that we should have. And that is a discussion we ignore all the time. So therefore we have this discussion. But let me uh, talk to you about incremental innovation. I think this is, to me, a creation to just discuss IP. I'll give you a simple example. In the 70s, 1970s, there was a drug called Griseofulvin. I'm going really back and making it very simple for you. Griseofulvin was an antifungal agent which was not effective. And then somebody found out that if they grind it more or create a letter, lesser particle size, the surface area available helps you to bind to the receptor site better. And therefore, it became a very effective drug. Now, the molecule existed, somebody innovated on it, realized what is the real science around it. You will say, no, no, but this is incremental innovation, so it's a nonsense. I will not pay for it. I think that is where the problem is. That incremental innovation is a term coined which is absolutely, according to me, no scientific value. Innovation is innovation. And if it has impact on health, if it is going to make people's life better or make people live longer, I think it has to be paid for or it has to be valued. That's important. The second thing you talked about IP. You know, there are reverse things that are happening on, on this issue. The biggest debate on IP happened because of HIV, basically. And in the 90s, late 90s, all this happened. And now India became the, you know, the, uh, um, the real supplier of HIV drugs. You know, recently we have seen a paper, probably the most profound paper written on what is happening with HIV delivery in Africa. There are just four supplies remaining now. Everybody has got out because the price has been, you know, people have beaten down the price consistently. There's four supplies remaining, all four from India. If one dollar was the price of the drug or the cost of that drug to reach a patient, ten cents is the pricing issue. And 90 cents the world is spending on administration of ensuring that the drug reaches the patient. So is it any more value in discussing IP, drug price, anywhere in HIV? We have, have we created a monster of an administrative mechanism which costs nine times more than the drug and therefore we are not able to deliver value. So there are much deeper issues since we get carried away by the debate in the newspapers or anywhere in the media or you know there's some hype created over these issues we actually miss out on the real real issues that have to be debated in this country and that's probably an important example of how IP and incremental innovation become points of discussion but for the wrong reasons and we never solve the right problem. Thank you. Um, the, the ominous presence of a host can't be ignored and now he's got this psychedelic thing going to uh, reinforce his, our exit from here. So like all good things have to come to an end. And uh, but It's a great question but I don't think this panel can address it and it's probably you're never going to have a final answer to this. It's a very contentious issue. On that note, um, I think we'll close but uh, great hand to this panel. Thank you, Anil. Thanks a lot. In fact, if you want to read more about innovation and uh, uh, IP protection and things, please read some of the things that we've written over a period of time. Uh, so I certainly believe that IP needs to be protected. There is absolutely no two way about it, whatever be the situation. Having said that, uh, thanks a lot for joining the panel today. A small token of appreciation. Uh, this IP should also be protected. A lot of people copy it. Uh, <laughs> Amy. Thanks. And I hope, Anil, you'll have time to read this uh, at some point in time in your career. Uh, <laughs> but thanks a lot. Uh, we'll just quickly get into a break. Let's get back into the room at 4.45. We have an amazing session uh, starting at 4.45, please. Thanks a lot.